Thousands of bizarre images captured all over the world. Mysterious creatures that live between blinks of the eye. What are they? That's the tougher question. Some think they are visitors from another dimension. Are these things that appear to be phasing in and out. Some fear that they pose a significant threat. And it looked like a missile. History suggests there may be a link to a real animal. The most plausible proto would look quite like many of the pictures of France. A missile, photographic anomaly, or something from another world. A monster quest investigation may finally reveal the truth. It could open up a whole new door to aerodynamics. The high-speed video camera will be recording at 2,000 frames per second. Hey guys. Witnesses around the world report seeing monsters. Are they real or imaginary? Science searches for answers on Monster Quest. The camera, capturing everything from news to weddings, immortalizing the moment. But they are also recording something else, a missile-like object or creature able to appear out of nowhere for just a fraction of a second before disappearing again. To researchers, they are simply called rods. Who knows what it is, but there was something there. These things travel at maybe 135, maybe 200 miles an hour. You can miss it with the naked eye. Rods are described as one to six feet long with a cylindrical body and either multiple sets of wings or with a thin membrane of wings wrapped around their entire length, propelling the creature forward so fast they are undetectable to the naked eye. Rods have been little more than a curiosity. That is, until October 20th, 2002. Is it a bird, a plane, or something else. People are asking now that a mysterious object has been caught on tape over Albany, New York. Brandon Mowry is a photojournalist from Albany, New York. He was shooting video for a local newscast when he found something he could not explain. I went out to the airport to shoot some weather video that day. Uh, it's a five second bump shot for the weather, tease for the weather. Um, I was shooting planes taking off at the Albany International Airport at the end of a runway. Maori did not notice anything out of the ordinary at the airport at the time. His discovery came upon returning to the station. While I was editing the tape, I happened to just pause it on, you know, on, on a frame. And um, I looked up, and there was this object in the, in the shot. What is this, a UFO? Is this, it looks strange, like a missile? You know, like what, what, all these things are going through my head. He found a long cylindrical winged object streaking past a passenger plane taking off from the airport. To Maori, it appeared to be large and very fast, appearing in only a few frames of video. It looks suspiciously like a missile over a commercial airport. Maori called in station reporter Dan Bazile to view the image. Still in the shadow of 9-11, Bazile felt he needed to notify airport security. Airport security, airport officials looked at it and they said, we have no idea what this is. I don't think we caught this on radar. They called the FBI. FBI came in, an agent came in, he confiscated, or I should say he just took the tape from Brandon and he took off. There may be good reason for the FBI's interest. It appears again in 2003 over Baghdad, moments after a giant explosion rocked the city. And in this video, a rod appears to fly past a Swedish tank at a test firing range. There are a surprising number of rods found in and around military operations or where aircraft are seen. Leading some to theorize, rods may be connected to secret military weapons. I believe it was something classified that the government doesn't want us to know about. It's flying up in the sky, they didn't want us to know about it, and they took that tape, they don't want us to know. So I'm thinking this was some sort of test. To this day, Brandon has stuck to his story, and the FBI considers the case open and would not comment on its findings. There's no doubt that this event was taken very seriously, okay, by the FBI and the military. It was definitely a matter 
of national security as far as they were concerned. Jose Escamilla is a Rod's researcher and historian who has collected over 2,000 Rod images from all over the world. And according to Jose, Rod's have been around for a long time. I'm going to show you a photo that was taken in 1910 in France. Here it is, check it out. This is the object here. 1910 during a race, and this object was here, and it's definitely cylindrical in shape. It seems to have undulations on it. Skeptics frequently tell Escamilla rods are just birds or bugs distorted by the camera, but he argues many rods are recorded in places where animals should not be flying about, like this video. Something's captured on the video. It appears to be cylindrical. It appears to be moving at high speed. Filmed in May 1999 and brought to the attention of meteorologist Gary England, this rod appears to fly through a tornado. It was recorded on a broadcast quality camera from a news helicopter, tracking a tornado as it swept through Oklahoma City. A large uh, tornado was coming up in the southwest toward Oklahoma City. It turned out to be uh, an F5 tornado. It turned out to be a tornado with the strongest winds ever recorded in history. The rod appears to emerge from a cloud that England estimates is 10 miles away from the news chopper. But does it really? When played in slow motion, it is difficult to tell whether the rod is going behind the cloud or is appearing and disappearing. You see what appears to be a, um, looks like a cylindrical tube, but it's a flash. It's a, uh, it's a flash that appears in the frame. Bang, move very quickly. It, it looks like it just appears out of a cloud. I looked at it and you kind of go, wow, you know, what is this? And I have to tell you right now, I still don't know what it is. Jose Escamilla has also seen the Oklahoma City videotape. Here's another one farther down, and this appears to be going into the funnel cloud itself. So this thing is going in there a pretty fast clip, and it's huge. That's an amazing shot. What was it doing in a thunderstorm that turned out to be that produced the worst tornado in history? You know, didn't make a lot of sense. The photographers that capture rods on tape claim they were not visible to the naked eye and were only discovered later by chance deepening the mystery. Who knows what it is, but there was something there. The rod's ability to appear and disappear in the blink of an eye leads some to an interesting theory. They are something from another dimension. I have seen footage, all right, of these things that appear to be phasing in and out. What I mean by phasing is they are there and part of the torso disappears and then the other torso, the other part comes back in. Whether it's from another dimension, I can't even answer that one. I'm just telling you what I've seen. This theory is not without precedent. Author and scientist Carl Sagan once said, if a fourth dimensional creature existed, it could, in our three-dimensional universe, appear and dematerialize at will. Is it theoretically possible for beings to cross between dimensions? Well, theoretically, yes. Professor Thomas Banchoff is a mathematician at Brown University. Time is used very frequently by physicists to represent a fourth dimension, especially since the work of Einstein in relativity theory, where we want to study phenomena, and the phenomena are events. You have three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. The classic analogy to understand dimensions higher than our own goes back to Edwin Abbott Abbott in 1884. He wrote the book Flatland. Flatland is a two-dimensional world, like the surface of a still pond. And one of the key things in that two-dimensional world, in the story, is a visitation from a creature from a higher dimension. A higher dimension is space land, and you have a beach ball that's ready to come through Flatland. When it does, A square, the narrator of Flatland, just sees the intersection of the sphere with the plane. He sees a circle. He recognizes circles. He's familiar with those in his world. But a circle that appears mysteriously and then disappears is something that is very hard for him to explain. Time travel and multiple dimensions have long been the basis for great stories. In 1895, H.G. Wells wrote the science fiction thriller, The Time Machine, later made into two movies. 
But most rods seem to be flying, not just popping in like Wells' time machine. One way to verify whether rods are either military experiments or an undiscovered flying creature is to see whether an object similar in shape can actually fly. Monster Quest puts it to the test. I believe the object can fly. Dr. Wee Hu is an aerospace engineer at Iowa State University. Any ship can fly as long as you uh, give a lot of power. Monster Quest and Doctor Who have enlisted several engineering students to help with an experiment. If these things are real, it could open up a whole new door to aerodynamics. They will build two different models, one with soft, flexible wings to simulate the descriptions of rods propelled by thin membranes, the other more rigid, resembling the descriptions of missile-shaped rods. The flight worthiness and aerodynamic characteristics of each model will be determined using the wind tunnel at Iowa State University. The models we made were, again, basically a flat plate, but the ends of it were somewhat flexible so it could move a little bit in the airstream. And then we covered it with a latex sheet to simulate like a skin or just some kind of covering. The wind tunnel allows the students to measure drag and lift in a controlled environment. Electronic sensors provide exact numbers. But is their experiment relevant to this photo? Allegedly picturing a craft that is at home in the water as well as the atmosphere, leading some to think that rods are alien UFOs. It was taken off of Norway in July 1957. It's a rod, you know, coming out of the ocean. Some researchers believe that rods could be a UFO. Now a photograph has surfaced, which bears closer scrutiny. We found a photograph taken by a naval person. It was taken off of Norway in July 1957. It's a rod, you know, coming out of the ocean, taken with 35 millimeter film. It has the rod shape, but seems to be moving sideways, away from the water, unlike any other rod images. While rods are, by definition, unidentified flying objects, are they from another world? I don't think so. I mean, we have objects, rod-like objects flying in, but that doesn't necessarily mean that an alien, you know, made them. This optical physicist says the classic winged rod images and circumstances surrounding them are different than the typical alien UFO sightings. UFO subject, of course, has a long history, approaching 60 years now, and it's not just visual is not just film or videos of things moving uh, at high speed. Uh, the UFO phenomenon has numerous witness cases where they see some object that's standing still or they see very clearly an object is moving slowly enough so there's no doubt that they can tell the shape. Regardless of whether rods are from Earth or someplace else, the question for the Iowa engineers is can the unusual rod wing design provide sufficient lift for flight? In order for the flying rod to fly, uh, you must have lift and you must have enough force to overcome drag. And so the wind tunnel can tell us basically the, the characteristic of the lift and drag characteristics. While they know the shape, they do not know whether rods are rigid or soft-bodied. So they are building one of each and will test the flight characteristics of both structures. The first model to enter the wind tunnel is the flexible body. As the wind speed increases, the team makes adjustments in the presentation angle of the rod. The flexible rod model soon begins to shake, becoming unstable in the wind unable to provide consistent lift. The rigid rod model is next to be tested. And as the wind speed increases, the model remains stable. As they adjust the flight angle, positive drag and lift numbers begin to appear.
The performance of the rigid model surprises the students. We got the numbers back and one of the tests was pretty surprising. It's a little bit stiffer, it wasn't flapping around in the wind as much as other ones. And it actually showed a little bit of a lift number. While the rigid model did perform better than the flexible body, it is still not a good flying design. It's just going to have a lot of drag and not a whole lot of lift. So it would take a huge propulsion system to get it moving through the air. From what we found, I can say that kind of shape is not very efficient for high speed flight. But if rods are from the fourth dimension, and we are only seeing a portion of them at any given time, we may not have the complete picture. This particular study, I think the most important area that we may have is that we may not have the complete vehicle. It is very, very possible that we're testing only a part of the vehicle. And therefore, if the test shows that this airplane or this rod does not fly, it may be that we're only testing, for example, just the tail part of an airplane, for example, and we don't have the whole picture. While pictures of rods are a relatively new phenomenon, history says humans saw something very similar centuries ago, and with the naked eye. A 1,000-year-old stone carving found in Argentina reveals an image that closely resembles a rod. The issue here is, how was man able to see a rod 1,000 years ago, long before the advent of cameras? Dr. Robert Curicini is a professor of biological anthropology with Southern Illinois University at Carbondale. He says over the years, some of man's senses have been diminished. We spend a lot of time looking at the printed page or at a TV screen. We don't focus the eye muscles. We don't dynamically exercise the eye muscles. But non-Western people definitely do. And they have, in fact, 2015 is the, the average visual acuity for a non-literate person, whereas we go with 2020 being perfect vision. An object in the sky would definitely be more, more visible to uh, somebody that uses their eyes, even a modern person that's non-literate, or probably ancient uh, pre-humans and humans probably could see further and more, more sharply than we can. This rod image may support Curicini's point. Shot at a zoo in Minnesota in 2005, this ape seems to notice the rod as it streaks past. Something the photographer says that he did not see. Early humans uh, not only would have been using their eyes more dynamically, but it would be more important to them. It would be a fundamental issue in their survival. So probably their peripheral vision would have been used more and would have been sharper as well as the distant vision straight ahead. But there is an account where modern man reported seeing a rod. This story first appeared in 1891 in the Crawfordsville, Indiana newspaper. The story goes that two icemen were working outside in Crawfordsville at about 2 a.m. when a bizarre object sailed overhead. Whoa, Kim, what's that up in the sky? Look at it. See that light? I see it, but I don't know what it is. I never saw anything like it. Oh, no. The icemen described the object as a seemingly headless monster, about 20 feet long and 8 feet wide, with no head or tail and propelled by fin-like attachments. Easy to It was called the Sky Monster and was said to swim through the air, much like these rods shot near a cave in Mexico. We wanted to go there and be the first to base jump into the cave. <laughs> Basically, we would jump from the rim, free fall for four or five seconds, open our parachutes, and then land somewhere at the bottom. Mark Lickley is an extreme cameraman. In November of 1996, while base jumping at the Cave of the Swallows, located 20 miles from Aquisman, Mexico, he captured some of the most impressive rod images to date. Well, when we first went to the cave on the first few trips, we, we did not see rods. We did not know what rods were. We were just down there doing our, our jumping and filming. When the video footage aired on television, we got a phone call from a Jose Escamilla who 
Shannon, do you realize what you caught on your tape? He goes, there's rods on your tape. Skeptics of the rods phenomenon said these strange images are likely birds or bugs. What makes this footage interesting is that all three are seen together and they don't look alike. This is a great example of rods and it's a good example because one, it's got rods at different levels in the cave, it's got birds in the scene and it also has a jumper under parachute down at the bottom of the cave. What's good about this is it gives us a great idea of, of rods compared to the birds. Lickley says he never saw or heard the rods during his cave dive, though he was aware of the birds and bugs around him. I'm going to go ahead and play some shots with rods in it, and you'll see many rods darting through the lens. And as you watch, you'll also notice that there are other things in the scene, which are just the common bugs. But here we had one here, here goes one there. In regular motion, you'll find that the rods appear through the shot fairly quickly. But if we watch it in slow motion, again, watch through here. And we'll watch again, frame by frame, it's quickly going through. You're seeing the rod fly right through the frame. Again, we're shooting at 30 frames a second. So you're going to get one still frame, two frames, three frames, four frames, five, and it's through the frame. So what we're proving there is that this, this, this creature, whatever it may be, is flying extremely fast rate. Probably the reason why we can't see them with the human eye. There's a lot of people out there who just want to say these are bugs flying fast through the lens. I don't think that's what they are. Jose Escamilla agrees that these rods are likely not bugs. A rod is what I feel is an entity of some kind that exists among us. It is a cylindrical shaped object that seems to be alive. It has the behavior of a living organism. There may be supporting evidence that rods are in fact animals. Videotaped outside a cave in China in 2005. This rod features details never before seen and could be the key to unlocking the mystery. Uh, it doesn't look like the pictures of rods that I've seen. I think this is, a, this is actually a shot of, of an animal. Most images of rods quickly streak through the camera's field of view in just a fraction of a second. But not this rod. It has a distinct flight pattern. Viewed frame by frame, you can clearly see an object about 18 inches long fly past the six-foot man in the screen. Even as it changes directions, two sets of wings are clearly visible. It darts and weaves around the man, looking more like an animal in flight than a missile's trajectory. If rods really are just photographic aberrations, as some skeptics claim, there may be a way to reveal their true identity. Monster Quest has asked high-speed camera expert Peter Schmitz to conduct a simple experiment. Film a hummingbird on a standard video camera while recording the same bird on a super high-speed camera. Schmitz works for motion engineering. His high-speed film work is used by scientists to see what is really happening during fast motion. The super fast shutter speed reveals detail in even the fastest moving objects like this internal combustion engine. Or this fluid dynamics test. The precise details revealed by the high-speed cameras have given science a better look at how materials act and react under stress and pressure. Ornithologist Carol Henderson and Berta Martha Yule will be joining Schmitz for the experiment. They were asked to view the cave image to determine if this is the flight pattern of a bird. Well, I'm not sure what I'm looking for here. I've never heard of these things. I haven't either. Never seen it, never heard it. 
Let's take a look. Okay, here it comes. There go. Now, it looks like they're, if there are wings, they're very transparent. The rod's maneuverability and speed exhibited in the footage seems to point to one bird in particular. The only bird that I've seen that it could resemble would be a hummingbird. Hummingbirds can have up to 70 wing beats per second, making them fast and highly maneuverable. Could the speed of the wing beat also explain the blurred image? So we've got one camera that will be recording at 30 frames per second, which is more of a conventional type camera. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a high-end, high-speed video camera. This camera will allow us to take probably today around 500 to 2,000 frames per second. The cameras will be trained on an iRig clock or counter so they can match the images of both cameras. You should be able to play the videos back and marry them together and be able to determine using the high-speed video camera if we're picking up what looks to be a rod with the conventional camera, we should be able to slow it down enough and identify just what it is that's flying through that field of view. Peter is hoping a hummingbird will fly through for comparison. They have set up the cameras near an active feeding station, but before the experiment can begin, there is a problem. A uh, little thin on birds out here this morning. Is there anything exciting happening or changing the weather? Uh -huh. It is a little quiet here. Um, a few hours ago we had a hawk coming through the yard, either a cooper's hawk or a sharp shinned hawk, and they eat other birds. So things are laying a little bit low. With the birds gone, Yule and Henderson review the K video again. But this time they discover some problems with their hummingbird theory. In a cave setting like this, and considering the, the white color of the, the creature being shown, uh, it just doesn't seem like that would be a logical place for a bird to be. It almost looked like there were two sets of wings, but you couldn't uh, really see a flapping at all. Not only is a cave an unlikely place for a hummingbird, geographically there is a problem. Hummingbirds are only found in North and South America. They're not found in Africa or Asia. So the setting of this particular film would exclude the hummingbird as a possibility. If not a bird, then what? Yeah, it looks to me more like insect flight than it would any kind of bird flight. But insect was the first thing that sort of popped into my mind, not bird. Could rods actually be an undiscovered bug? History says an evolutionary predecessor of flying insects looked very similar. The most plausible proto pterygote would look quite like many of the pictures of rods. Professor Robin Wooten of the University of Exeter in the United Kingdom is a leading expert on insect biomechanics, paleontology, and evolution. He says the first bugs probably looked like rods, as demonstrated by this flyable model. The origin of insect flight was probably about 360 million years ago. Proto-pterygote is a name which has been given to a kind of hypothetical ancestor of the winged insects. So these things would be gliding, using the movable winglets to stabilize their fall. But there is a problem with the proto-pterygote theory. I think it's extremely unlikely that proto-pterygotes would survive for any length of time because these are transitional forms. They're not very good at flight. They would need to have very, be in very isolated, very strange conditions not to, be, uh, not to have become extinct. There is the argument, obviously, that there are intermediate forms in the mammals in particular, the flying squirrels, the flying phalanges, this kind of thing. And so in that sense, it's not inconceivable that uh, an intermediate stage, which wasn't very good at active flight, could nonetheless make use of gliding. So one can't rule it out in, uh, in, in entirely. Bugs may actually make sense. There are dragonflies with multiple wings, and many can travel as fast as small birds. They are also highly maneuverable and could produce a similar flight pattern. Peter Schmitz is setting up another experiment using the side-by-side -side high speed and standard speed cameras in his backyard where he regularly sees an assortment of bugs. Well, let's see if we can um, go out there, set up a light, try to attract some bugs. Let's give it a try. Floodlights should attract many different types of bugs into the camera's field of view. 
Peter Schmitz and field producer Doug Hycheck must align the cameras so they are seeing the exact same field of view. Once again, the key to the camera and the standard speed camera. Any object passing through both fields of view can be matched with a split second readout. Stand by for wood chips. Tossing wood chips in the field of view confirm the cameras are properly aligned. There's our wood chips flying by. At 250 frames a second, we're getting a little blur. Okay. Yeah, the wood chips streaked on mine. I got them. Now we just gotta wait for a rod to fly by. It will be a long night for Schmitz and his experiment. Rod researcher Jose Escamilla has heard the bird bug conclusion from Carol and Yule and has an issue with it. That is not an insect. It's not an insect. And it's not a bird. This thing passed right by his ear, you know. Why didn't he react? All right, if it was a moth or an insect or a mosquito, you'd, have heard, you, you, you know, you'd react. I mean, you'd, you know, you hear something like that. This guy didn't even know anything passed by him. Why didn't he react? Reporter Dan Bazile agrees it is not a bird or bug. The rod recorded over Albany Airport was too large and fast to be any known bug or bird. It wasn't moving like an insect where you can see, well, they can move here, move there, and it was moving straight, supersonic speed. It looks like a missile. High speed seems to be a recurring theme and could explain why people are not able to see rods. But determining how fast they travel is difficult. In most videos, there is no known reference for gauging distance. But the China cave rod is the exception. Just how fast is this rod moving? According to Peter Schmitz, the only rod video that contains enough measurable points for calculating an estimated speed is the China cave rod. To determine speed, there must be a starting point, an ending point, and a lapse time. In the China cave video, the starting point is the cave opening. As the man steps through the opening, a light change is clearly seen. He takes 10 strides, or an estimated 30 feet, into the cave, the end point. The rod appears at approximately the same point at the cave entrance, determined by the same light change, marking the end point for both subjects. The rod is visible for 30 frames before it appears to rise over the man's shoulder approximately 30 feet into the cave. Shot at 30 frames per second, this means it took the rod approximately one second to travel the estimated 30 feet. That calculates to 30 feet per second or 20.46 miles per hour, well within the range of many birds, bugs and bats. But speed aside, how do you explain the unusual images? There are no known animals that have two sets of wings spaced apart in quite the way these rods do. Doctor Who believes the answer to the rod mystery is in the camera. If you use the internet camera, you will see that's actually one uh, full image was separate into uh, image one we call the odd field, another is even field. Doctor Who is describing a process by which video is recorded. In film cameras, it is common knowledge that shutter speed affects the image. A slow shutter speed can create blurring or elongated images, as in this example. But when the shutter speed is increased, the blur is reduced or even eliminated. However, in video, the recording process is different. The moving picture is made up of a series of stills or frames. Within each frame, there are two fields, interlaced together to give the video a smooth motion. So in a camera that records at 30 frames per second, there are 60 fields per second. For the all field, you will see the string line. For even field, is also the uh, string line. The dual fields in each frame of video can create elongation and duplication of objects moving at high speeds. Using this car as an example, not only is it elongated when the two fields are combined, but four wheels are visible instead of two. To demonstrate, Doctor Who has set up a simple experiment. Fire a paintball through the field of view of a video camera. If his theory is correct, 
we will see not a single ball passing by, but an image in each field, creating a doubled or elongated image of the ball. The experiment is not a complete success. The ball has clearly become a blurred elongated image in this frozen frame. But when the frame is split into two fields, it is seen in only one field. The most likely reason is because the paintball was moving too fast to be captured in both fields. But his theory is still valid. All images would be doubled. In other words, one pair of wings becomes two, and two pair of wings becomes four. But then, how do you explain this rod with an odd number of wings? Hold on, wait, 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 wait. I just saw something. Look at this. Three sets of wings. Yeah, that's different. Jose and his assistant have found a rod image that seems to contradict Dr. Who's doubling theory. What does it mean? It means that their theory about double image is not going to wash with this. Going back to Dr. Who's interlacing theory, a videotaped image can only have wings in multiples of two. Three sets of wings would seem to be impossible, as no known bird or flying mammal has such a characteristic. But what about an insect? No insect has three pairs of wings. The maximum number of pairs of wings in any insect, known or modern or fossil, is two pairs. Dr. Wooten has seen all the rod images featured in this show and was asked, are any of these rods insects? There's nothing specifically insect about any of the shots I've seen. The stroke planes of insects tend to be down and forward and then up and back. Sometimes like that, but always in this sort of way. Never are they anything like that. The individual shots of these, uh, some of these um, images in the cave of the swallows show the opposite. They show the, uh, the wings apparently up there at the top of the stroke and down there at the bottom of the stroke. And that would not fit with any, in any insect that I know of. I don't think these are performing powered flight at all. I don't think they fit in with any known way of propelling an object through air. But they're not beating wings, they're not operating in the way that insects would. As in my view, these are projectiles. They have to be projected by something. Peter Schmitz and the high-speed camera test may reveal the answer to this mystery. As a crew member shakes the bushes and lawn to get more bugs moving through the field of view, rods suddenly appear on the standard camera. They have been hiding in the foliage. Rods, strange cylindrical images recorded on film and videotape around the world. The FBI allegedly investigated this man's video of a missile-like rod over an Albany airport. This scientist says rods are just photographic aberrations created by the cameras themselves. This man says a creature that looks much like a rod did exist at one time. And this man says it is a real creature that may be able to make its way in and out of the fourth dimension. And this camera expert has caught a rod simultaneously on both a high speed and standard speed camera. As a crew member stirs the surrounding foliage, rods appear first as just a streak. But when moving closer to the camera and the light source, the image takes on a more rod-like form. The high speed camera has been rolling as well at 1,000 frames per second compared to the 30 frames per second camera. The source is revealed, a moth. By having the split-second clock read out in both camera views, you can match the exact object in both cameras. We did capture a few images that were very telling. Uh, images that appeared to be rods, but when we looked at them more closely with the high-speed video, determined they were nothing more than a bug flying through our field of view. So, are all rods bugs? Not necessarily. In this series of digital still photos shot by Anders Jalovic in Malmo, Sweden, a rod swoops down to the water. As he increases the shutter speed during successive exposures, the rod clearly is seen as a seagull. But when he decreases the shutter speed, it becomes a rod again. And remember the failed paintball test? 
In four consecutive fields of video, a piece of red debris from the paintball can be seen falling through the screen, creating a rod image. Because of the wide variety of locations and environments, sizes and flight patterns, the most plausible theory is that rods are many different fast-moving objects, all distorted by the camera itself. That could explain this image shot by NASA in 1994. The rod image is likely just space debris. And this video shot in 1995 of a rod clearly swimming underwater. A known fish could be responsible. It would also explain why rods might be seen in the tornado footage shot in Oklahoma. Likely debris propelled by the storm at high speeds. A lot of people like to think that uh, pictures don't lie or cameras don't lie and, and that, that, that's not necessarily true. They, they, they do the best they can to tell the truth. Mike Bergeron is an engineer with Panasonic Broadcasting, a company that manufactures cameras. Any camera is capable of producing uh, what we call artifacts. And an artifact is just something that appears in the picture that wasn't actually there, um, that wouldn't have been visible to someone standing there watching. But if rods are all known objects distorted by the camera, why are they not seen all the time? A camera can be fooled just as your eyes can be fooled. Um, different things might fool the camera that wouldn't fool your eyes if you were there. Um, and a, a camera, especially a modern digital camera, um, it makes assumptions about what it thinks pictures ought to do in a normal situation. Now, occasionally it guesses wrong and it creates things that aren't there. And what about the Mexican K video, where birds, bugs and rods are all seen in the same field of view at the same time? The moving objects that are most likely to cause uh, a, a double image artifact or a motion blur artifact are the objects that are moving the fastest from the camera's point of view. The things that will appear to be moving the fastest from the camera's perspective are things right in front of it. So they don't have to be going that fast to be going very fast as far as the imager is concerned. If they're moving fast enough they can get a motion blur where they are in many places at once in the course of one exposure. The reason rods are only found occasionally is because you need just the right mix of object speed, distance from the camera, shutter speed, and light. History says early bugs did look like rods, but likely were not good at flight. Now that we're coming to know more about the way in which insects do work in terms of aerodynamics and in terms of other aspects of, of their flight mechanisms, now at last uh, a proper knowledge of insects is beginning to feed into technology. And the engineering team says one rod model could fly, but the propulsion system would need to be quite powerful. If rod, the flying rod, is discovered to be indeed flyable, it will not be a surprise to science. And if some rods really are undiscovered creatures or objects, science could learn from their design. There may be even better ways of flying that remain to be discovered. In this experiment, Monster Quest used sophisticated photographic equipment under controlled conditions to reveal the true identity of several rods, proving that they can be debris, birds, or bugs. But without additional data, it is impossible to know for sure what creature or object is behind each and every rod image, like the mysterious video shot by Brandon Mowry in Albany, New York. We know only that the camera recorded a distorted image of some kind of winged object over the airport that day. However, until the FBI releases the results of their investigation, we may never know for sure. What we do know is that it created enough havoc, all right, to have the FBI interrogate the cameraman and for them to take the tape and try to just sweep it under the rug, because we've never heard anything of what happened to that tape anymore. At this time, science does not support the probability that rods exist in the modern world. But the door is still open. To say that they don't exist, that's, that's incorrect. They're there. What are they? That's the tougher question. In science, it's very important that we're open-minded. Because we don't know everything. <laughs>